Hi, this is Jenny from Trendy Tree, and I'm having trouble with my phone, as always. It looks a little crooked, but I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Uh, it's a rainy day, and usually my husband is playing golf this time of the day, but it's raining, so he's in the other room. So, you know, anyway, there may be noises, you never know. Uh, Carrie and David are headed to Florida for a few days for a little family vacation, so it's just me today. So I'm coming to you from my craft room here at home, and I know, you know, the sound is not great in this room. There's a little echo and that sort of thing. I'm going to pull up uh, the live on my iPad so I can see any comments. So just give me a second here. And let's see. It always takes just a minute or so to, you know, make sure things are working right. And I really never have good luck, it seems like, coming from the house, but we'll try it. I'm looking for the live, so just, okay. All right, so I'm going to pull this up so I can see any comments, maybe. All right, so what I thought I would do today, I made some velvet, well, not really velvet. Well, I did make some velvet pumpkins, but they all went to the store and were sold. So I have this navy blue pumpkin that I made and I made these pumpkin stems and they're made out of clay. So I did a tutorial to show, you know, how to make the velvet pumpkin, but I really didn't do the tutorial to show you how to make the stem. So I thought this morning I would just take a minute and show you how I made those stems. Of course, there's a little bit of lag time from, you know, the video to my iPad. So, um, I will try, I'll try to read the comments. If you are here and you hear me okay, give me a thumbs up and let me know. Um, let me know where you're from. I'd love to know where you're watching from. So, uh, what I did, I'll show you some that I've already made. And these are uh, some stems that I made out of clay. And this is what they look like, you know, before you paint them. And these are some real stems that I painted. Carrie bought these stems off of Etsy, and I just painted them. Uh, I painted them with a gold paint, and then went back over with a black and kind of antiqued them. And uh, y'all like, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't get the iPad over here in front of me, so I have to keep looking at it over here to the side because always, you know, when you get ready to do something, I brought the iPad in here so I could see the comments, and it had like 19% battery, so it's plugged in, but it will only reach about four feet. So it's over here where I, I can hardly see it still, but anyway, <laughs> I'm here. So this, I, I looked at this, um, well, first off, you know, pumpkin stems are a premium, you know. Carrie bought these off of Etsy, but it was like $20 for just a little small bag of of real pumpkin stems. So uh, if you decorate with pumpkins or you have jack-o'-lanterns, be sure if, if you want to, you know, keep them, uh, hang on to those stems so you can use them later. Uh, you can dry them and, you know, apparently it's not very hard to do. So if you get a chance to go to a pumpkin patch after Halloween, maybe they just let you pick some up. But anyway, they're just hot glued onto the fabric pumpkins and they really, you know, they do pretty good. So, and you know, I, I'm not an artist. I don't profess to be artistic at all. So uh, this is just, you know, very primary, <laughs> uh, a very primary craft. So I looked it up on YouTube to see how someone had made them and they had used this Crayola air dry clay. You get this at Walmart and this is a small container and it was like, four or five dollars and then they have a larger container that's like about nine or ten dollars but this is what you do and it says it will air dry in two or three days but now I thought you know you know how impatient we all are I could never wait two or three days for it to dry so I put uh, the ones that I had made like these I put them on some parchment paper on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven and put the oven on like the lowest setting and just let them stay in the oven all day and they dry. So, you know, you don't, you don't have to wait two or three days. And then after they dried, I painted them. So, what I thought I would do today is just show you how I made that. 
Okay. Thank you all for watching. A lot of people from Louisiana. And, I, you know, the hurricane, uh, you know, we're getting rain here today. So I, I know there, you know, some bad weather still coming. So when, when I first made my first pumpkin stem, the first mistake that I made, and, you know, I, I think it helps. If I share my mistakes, then maybe you won't make it, was I took out too much of the clay to start with, you know, because uh, I'm like, I wanted to make a big stem. Well, I made my stem, and the weight of the stem was so heavy, it wouldn't stay curved. It just kept kind of falling over. So after that, I made them smaller. All right, I'm going to try to move my iPad where I can see it. I know that's distracting for me to be looking off away from it. So anyway, I'm gonna, maybe it'll be charged up long enough that I can use it. Okay, so... You want to take your handful of clay and you want to, you know, you want to kind of knead it around and get the air out of it. Uh, just, you know, knead it for, you know, a couple of minutes or I don't know. It's, it's pretty pliable, but you, you know, you want to get that air out of it. So I just go ahead and kind of roll it, kind of start it in the shape of a pumpkin stem. I don't know what I meant to do. I want to let me get a, one of my real pumpkins so you have something to look at and that helps. Hang on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, y'all. I thought I was prepared. Um, mm -hmm. But this, this is a real pumpkin that I have on my coffee table. And I picked my pumpkins out based on the stem. Of course, I like the white pumpkins, but I wanted to have that, you know, sometimes it's helpful to have that in front of you when you're looking. And I really like this stem. It's a large stem. And that's going to be great, you know, after, you know, November, after Thanksgiving, you know, I'll get rid of these. But I'm going to keep these stems and try to dry them um, and use them next year. Okay? So, I, I'm just going to kind of have that in front of me when I'm making my stem. Okay. Get that out of the way. All right. So, I'm just going to start out with kind of a tubular shape. And I'm going to kind of... Flatten it. Now, I also, I'm using my, my cutting mat, but I don't want clay to get on my cutting mat. So I've got a glass, a tempered glass cutting board. So that's going to protect my cutting mat. I don't want to get this on my cutting mat. But I'm just going to kind of flatten that bottom. If you look at these real, this real stem, you know, they kind of get narrow at the top and they're wide at the bottom. And I don't know if you... You've done much fishing or anything like that. You know, I used to go with my husband a lot. And when we would go to uh, lakes and things, these, <laughs> they look like oh, those old cypress stumps that you see, see sticking up out of the water. But anyway, so I just kind of flatten that. You need that flat surface so you can glue it uh, to your pumpkin too. And you want to make ridges. I mean, like I say, this is a real one. And you see how those ridges are? Of course, this one I've been I painted already. But you want to make some ridges. So I just took an orange stick and kind of gonna make that base kind of bring it's kind of kind of grotesque looking actually, but anyway. But I'm gonna take that orange stick and just kind of press. And make a good ridge like that. I'm gonna do that all the way around. And you may have made some of these and uh, have a better way of doing it. I, I would love to see your comments if you have. Uh, but I just kind of went all the way around that with an orange stick. You can use a toothpick too. I hear my husband's phone going off, y'all. But just kind of make those ridges all the way around. And I, you want those crevices to be kind of deep. I hope you can see that okay. Just kind of go back and make those crevices deep. And then around the base of your pumpkin, 
you can kind of see how the base of that pumpkin has little these little indentions here I'm gonna kind of take that and just kind of make those kind of look like like feet like dog feet or something paws I don't know this is Friday. Are y'all glad it's Friday? I am. Of course, I kind of lost my flat bottom when I handled it like that. Well, I'm just going to flatten that bottom out a little more. And you don't want it too smooth because, you know, um, you want it to have, you know, some character, I guess. I don't know. Everybody likes to play with clay, though. <laughs> Tell me what you've been working on this week. Are you, are you, or do you decorate for Halloween? Or are you making all Christmas now? Or just thinking about thinking about your Christmas decorations? I haven't really decided on my Christmas theme yet. What color I'm going to go with? I have a white flocked tree. So, you know, I can do just about anything, but I just haven't decided yet. Now, after I'm kind of satisfied with the indentions and all, I'm just gonna kind of twist that a little bit. Twist that and make it a little curved. So that one is just about done. The only thing I need to do is, you see the end of the real pumpkin stem? It's kind of um, holy. So I'm going to take like the end of an orange stick and just kind of peck that up a little bit. See that? Can you see that okay? And then I'm just going to set it, you know, set it away to dry. Just let that, that's how it looks. Okay, whoops. I'll just set that and let it dry. So, that's, that's, I mean, that's one way of making them. Like I say, I'm sure there's more. Um, and you can twist them and turn them. You just have to be careful that you don't make them too long. If you make them too long, they're going to be top heavy and um, they'll fall, you know, they'll fall over. Sorry, that part of the paper noisy but that's the way it'll look and I'll put that in the oven and, and just let it you know I'll make some more but let that kind of bake all day and you can just any way you want to make it I guess all right so that's how that is done so here's one that I that I've already baked and dried I can't say all the comments y'all An orange stick. I'm sorry, somebody. Uh, and Janetta said she had never heard of an orange stick. It's in the. It's a fingernail. You know, it's an orange stick is what you use to push the cuticle away, uh, and it's pointed on one end, so you can clean under your fingernails, and it's, it has a flat, yeah. angled, on one end. You buy them in a pack, uh, in the fingernails, in the nail polish supplies. Okay, sorry I missed that comment. Okay, oh, I was gonna tell you too. Let me, let me try, let me get one more piece of, I made a makeshift mold. Now, some of you that know me know I have a brother. I have a, a younger brother and his name is Jackie. And he is, uh, he could have been an engineer. He, he's like an engineer, but without an engineering degree, he can just about he can just about do anything. So uh, he has a shop, and you have seen us do lives from his shop. But anyway, uh, he makes all kinds of things in his shop out of the house, and <clears throat> sometimes he makes I, I don't know exactly what you call it, but I, I call it an injection mold. I, I don't know for sure. But he can take chemicals and make a mold that 
you know, you make the mold and then later you pour like this resin or rubber or something into it and, and it makes a shape. So I told him that I wanted him to make me a mold for some pumpkin stems. So he, of course, he didn't know what I was doing with them and that kind of thing. So uh, that's a project that we have when he gets not too busy and uh, we're going to work on that. So in the meantime, I thought, well, what the heck? I think I'll try something. So I took a piece of the clay and I flattened it out and I left it about an inch thick and I flattened it out. And then I took one of the real pumpkins stems and I pressed it down in that mold. I pressed it down in that clay and then eased it back out. And then I put that in the oven and baked it just like that. So what I was going to do, I was going to see how my makeshift mold works. Of course, this is not real tough. It's not like ceramic. I mean, you know, it'll break easy. But I was just going to press that down in there and just see if that gives me a, it gives me a pretty good ridge. Look at there. Jackie will be proud of me. So I'll just put that in. But now, of course, when you press it down in there, I, <clears throat> what I need is two of these. So you could put this down in there and take another piece and press, you know, press into it. Well, you could just take your piece of pumpkin stem. Let's see how that works. And you get some real real ridges, but this is a real one. You just kind of experiment. And like I say, who doesn't like to play with clay? Uh, Janetta, I put it in the oven on my lowest temperature, which I think was about 150. Uh, just very, very low, just like a warm oven, and just let it sit in there all day. So I'm going to squeeze it around the bottom and make my, make my little base. Like I said, you do want it flat on the bottom so you can uh, hot glue it uh, to your pumpkin. And then I'm just going to take the orange stick and I'm going to make some indentions around the bottom. Of course, sometimes when you, you know, pull it off, you kind of mess things up. But anyway, that, that's kind of a realistic looking creases, I guess. I'm going to thin this one out a little bit, try to make it a little bit longer. Just make those crevices deep. And then I'm just gonna twist it, you know, kind of twisting it really, you know, adds a lot to it. And always, you know, if you get cracks in it before you get it dry, you can always just take, you just kind of wet your finger and, you know, smooth over that. If you have places that, you know, are cracked pretty much. I didn't have any water in here. I didn't bring any water in here. And then take that end and just pick it up. <laughs> you 
just set it around. And like I said, you can just let it air dry or you can put it in the oven. Okay. Just gonna lay that aside. And I'm gonna take, um, this is one that I, I already dried and it is, uh, Janetta, it is called Air Dry Clay. It's, this is from Crayola. You get it back there in the coloring book section with the kids crafts. And uh, it, this is uh, a two and a half tub. And I made, this is my second tub. I just bought this tub the other day. And these are the only, I, I don't know offhand how many I made, 10 or 12 maybe. Uh, out of it just depends I guess on how much you how big you make them and of course Matt played with it played with some of the clay too but uh, I was going to show you I, and I bought my paints came from Walmart it's just a metallic metallic gold and then just a black paint and I got silver but I like the gold uh, I like the gold and black first better I mean, this is a natural pumpkin stem. It hadn't had anything done to it. And then this is the one that I painted. So it, they really look, you know, pretty. The gold and black works good, I think. So I'm just gonna do a, a base coat of gold. Just gonna put a little bit of gold paint on my, it doesn't take much. A little bit of gold paint. Move this out of the way. And just those little cheap foam brushes. This is all washable too. And I, you know, I only put one coat on them. You know, if you really want it to be shiny gold metallic, you could put more than one coat, I'm sure. I didn't. Um, but I've covered as much of that with the foam brush as I could. And I didn't put enough paint. I'm trying to not waste my paint, and I didn't put enough. Go over that with the foam brush, cover as much space as I can, and then I've got like a smaller brush to get in the crevices. I love to paint. I've never really been able to. I mean, you know, like, well, I just, I never have, no. Of course, this is going to get on my hand, y'all, but that's okay. Could have painted the bottom first. You may have to like paint the top part and then let that dry and then pick it up and paint the bottom. Um, but there's some crevices that I need to get in, so I'm gonna get like a little smaller brush and get in those crevices. And I noticed too, uh, on, on the ones that I've already done, like sometimes if I glued them, when I glued them to the pumpkin, then I might see a little bit of the white uh, clay shining through. And if that happened, I just touched it up with a permanent marker. Now I'm sure, you know, there's lots, many, many people more talented than me. So, you know, you can probably shape these and make them look a lot better. I think it helps to have a pumpkin in front of you so you can kind of look at what a real pumpkin stem looks like, you know, while you're working on it. Carrie came down one day and she helped me make some. Like I say, they are, they're headed to Florida for a little well-deserved vacation with the kids. They'll be gone for a few days. Of course, the warehouse is, you know, they're getting out orders. Oh, and if you haven't uh, heard about our Facebook group, we have a face Facebook group called the Trinity Tree Wreath Club. And if you like making wreaths or arrangements or decorating or anything else, we hope that you'll join. Just look it up on Facebook. Brenda says she had a problem uh, in glue and it would fall off, the glue didn't stick. Brenda, I, I haven't had any trouble with mine. Now, of course, I caution people, you know, to not pick it up by the stem, you know, afterwards. 
uh, but now I haven't had you know any problems with with it with the stem coming off now I use a uh, Gorilla Glue uh, Gorilla Glue sticks I mean that's just the kind that we always get okay so now typically you know I would let this sit here and dry before I did the black but just just because we're doing it today I'm gonna go ahead and put the black on it just so you can see what that looks like and I don't need much of the black of course and I'm just gonna take my same brush and just dip it in that black and you know I don't know anything about painting y'all I've never been one of those people that could do the faux finishes on paint or furniture or anything so you know you may see me do something that's a no-no or something that I don't know you know I just kind of try what I like <laughs> And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, that's okay. But I just kind of go over that with a little, a little black. Don't cover it up completely. Just kind of hit the high spots. And then sometimes I even go back and take, you know, take something and wipe some of that off. And anyway so that's what it looks like now I will come back and paint that bottom I want to cover that up and paint it with you know black or I'll just paint it with black because that's what I've got on my plate just paint that bottom and like I say once you glue it onto your pumpkin if you have a little a little white peeking through just take a little black permanent marker and touch it up and that doesn't take long to dry okay all right let's see <laughs> Pat, Patty's probably done this before she says you need to paint the dark and the cracks and the low spots and then the gold on the high spots so you know maybe i should put the black on first and then the gold so you know there's different ways of doing it so you know try a couple and just see how you like it um uh, i'm sure there's lots of different ways to do it okay thank you all right well thank you for watching i appreciate it and i'm going to clear this off my table i have a halloween wreath tutorial that i need to finish up if you um, watched the live the other day, I picked out some Halloween material, Halloween supplies, not material, uh, and I made a Halloween wreath. Let me show you the mesh. And I put together a few kits. Uh, I have the blog post almost, I have the blog post finished. I just have to wait till I finish editing the video. But this is the mesh that I use. Um, it's a it's a really pretty Halloween. It's 21 inch and it's got purple, orange, lime, and black. And that's what I use for the base of the mesh. Uh, it's a it doesn't have any foil. It's a polypropylene and it has like some polyester fabric in it. Well, after I finish the after I finish the wreath, uh, you can you know you don't see this mesh. So what I did in the kit was. I thought no point in putting this this is a premium mesh no point in using that mesh if it doesn't show so in the kit I put in a, a plain mesh Patty says she's painted all her life so y'all let's, let's listen to Patty she said paint the dark and the cracks and the low spots and then the gold on the high spots so I probably did my right bass efforts but anyway thank you Patty <laughs> Uh, the other mesh that I used on the wreath was this border mesh. It's lime and has purple, copper, and black foil on the edges. And I did a technique that, uh, wreath technique that Damon Oates, Deco Exchange, uh, used the other night. And I like the way it turned out. So that video I hope to have ready to go today. And that's about it. So let me see. Uh, is there any more questions that I missed? Uh, I will try to, let's see.
I'm just going to kind of scroll back through the questions just, just in case I missed anything. I appreciate it. I hope that you all are following the Trinity Tree page and put a, a you know, click a, a check on the notifications so that you'll get our notices when we go live. And we try to go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from the Trinity Tree warehouse. It's not always from the warehouse. Sometimes it's like this. And on Tuesday and Thursday, we go live from the uh, City Mercantile store, which is uh, Carrie's retail store in downtown Pontotoc. And um, we hope that you'll, you know, follow our lives, okay? Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Thanks, Patty, for the tips. We appreciate that. Thank you. Bye-bye.